Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and every now and then I'll learn things and go, wow, that seemed really important. These are things I should have learned in school. Three. This specific episode is just focusing on two things, the first being, why do astronauts in the International Space Station float? This one's easy, it's because there's no gravity in space, right? Uh, wrong! If there's no gravity in space, why is this dude able to jump without flying away? I'm kinda sassy right now. Yeah, so I always thought it was because we had zero gravity, but if we look at the formal equation for gravity, that's not really possible. G is a gravitational constant, and because virtually everything has mass, we're never going to have zero as the force of gravity. Now, because distance squared is in the denominator, the farther away we get from some body, the less gravity there will be. But the floating astronauts in the International Space Station are close enough to Earth that they still feel 89% of our gravity. So clearly, that's not the reason they're floating. So why do they float? Well, let's use this video NASA published, and it seems like the 1800s to illustrate this. Imagine you're in an elevator that's falling at the same acceleration of gravity. This is known as being in free fall. Now, since you're also in that elevator, you'll adjust to fall at the acceleration of gravity too. And now, because both you and the elevator are in free fall, it's going to feel like you're floating inside of the elevator, even though there's clearly still gravity. Okay, back to the astronauts on the International Space Station. The reason they're floating there is exactly the same. They're in free fall. The ISS is their elevator, and they're well, they're still people. But instead of falling towards the Earth like an elevator, they're actually falling around it. If you tried to throw something around the Earth, the gravity would eventually bring it down. But if it has enough speed when it's thrown, its path will match up with the planets, and it'll enter a constant state of free fall around the Earth, which we call orbit. These images, by the way, come from Tim Urban's blog, Wait But Why. It's inspired me with other videos I've done, and it's an awesome blog, so just check it out, link in the description. So yeah, astronauts in the International Space Station float because they're in a constant state of free fall inside of something else that's in a constant state of free fall. It has nothing to do with zero gravity, even though NASA erroneously says that on their own website. All right, thing number two. Why is our keyboard arranged like this? This is called a QWERTY keyboard because the keys in the top left spell out QWERTY, and it was created in the 1870s by inventor Christopher Latham Scholes. Now, there are two main guesses as to why the keys are arranged in this pattern. The first and most common is that this arrangement helped minimize jamming from a typewriter. With a typewriter, you press a key and the arm comes up, and it's possible that the arms could get stuck together and jam the typewriter if certain buttons are pressed too quickly or are positioned too close to each other on the keyboard. So supposedly, this arrangement minimized the possibility of typewriter jams. However, some researchers have called this into question and instead proposed that the layout was designed to help telegraph operators translate Morse code. Telegraph operators were some of the only people who even used typewriters back then, and they supposedly gave Scholes feedback for where the keys would help them best translate Morse code. Whatever the origin might be, the QWERTY layout was picked up and mass produced by typewriter companies, and then other companies who made things with keyboards didn't want to use something that was totally different, so they just stuck with the QWERTY layout, and then even when we got to electric typewriters or computers, which are totally different things, they just carried it over. So yeah, we don't use the QWERTY layout for any modern or logical reason, just because it's hard to fight the status quo. That's called path dependency. And while we don't know whether the QWERTY layout was developed for typewriters or Morse code translators, one thing is clear. It wasn't designed for modern human typists. It could be better. In fact, even Christopher Scholes, who invented the QWERTY layout, didn't think it was the most efficient for use, so he continued to tweak and improve it throughout his life. Here's the patent for the last version he drafted before dying. Others have also recognized that maybe the QWERTY layout isn't the most efficient and drafted their own. In 1932, August Dvorak and his brother-in-law, William Dealey, created the Dvorak keyboard. I don't know why William didn't get his name in there, but okay. The Dvorak keyboard was supposed to be more efficient than the QWERTY one, designed to have typists moving their fingers less. For example, in the QWERTY keyboard, only one vowel is in the home row, whereas the Dvorak keyboard has all of them there. And in QWERTY, only 32% of the strokes are done in the home row, whereas in Dvorak, 70% of them are. All this amounts to the Dvorak keyboard requiring only about 60% of the movement needed in a QWERTY keyboard. And if this Dvorak keyboard looks at all familiar to you, it's probably because you remember the patent Christopher Scholes made before he died. They look very similar. Now, while it seems like the Dvorak keyboard keyboard would undoubtedly be faster and more efficient, there haven't really been any solidly sound studies that have found this, and other studies have found that just retraining people to type on QWERTY keyboards more quickly is more than enough. Despite failed attempts to convert Dvorak to the default keyboard, it does exist as a backup on most computers you'll see nowadays. So we don't exactly know why it was developed, though it could probably be better, though also the keyboards that have been designed since then might not actually be better. Good conclusions we got. That's it for me, brother, I'll see you on weekday. Now there are two main- now there are two main- now there are two main- there are two- now there are two- now there are two main guesses as to why the keys are arranged in this pattern.